So in this video I'm going to build a crosshair antenna but this time it's for the uh, 5.8 gigahertz frequency uh, normally used for FPV. And again I'm going to add my own little twist to this I'm going to enclose it in a uh, waveguide here to get a little bit more range out of it hopefully but uh, it does narrow the beam width slightly but you can use the methods that I've used in this video but just replace the waveguide with some kind of uh, cardboard tubing or plastic tubing just to protect the uh, elements from uh, getting dinged because they are quite small and fragile and I'd also uh, make the uh, bat reflector slightly bigger I'd probably go for something that's about uh, 80 millimeters in width and probably about 180 millimeters in length so here are the measurements that I'm going to use them for the 5.8 gigahertz so uh, we've got the ballon again now again you don't have to include a ballon but uh, if you do you do get a little bit more performance out of this antenna and it is really really simple to do so the length of the ballon is 13.5 millimeters now the uh, height of the uh, elements from the uh, back reflector is 10.4 millimeters the short leg measurement is 11.8 millimeters and the uh, long leg measurement is 13.11 millimeters so the measurements for this particular antenna then are really really small for the uh, elements themselves but uh, the methods that I will show you in this video will uh, hopefully make it a little bit easier for you to build. So what I've got here is a uh, piece of single sided PCB board. It measures 100 millimeters by 70 millimeters. And I've just drawn a uh, X in the middle there to find the center of the board. And uh, what I'm gonna do is drill a hole through the center wide enough to fit this uh, tubing through. This is uh, five millimeter diameter tubing. And I've uh, got this from one of those uh, cheap uh, telescopic uh, aerials so that's what I'm going to actually use for the ballon and as for the coax this time I'm going to use uh, some of this semi-rigid coax rather than normal coax because uh, that way we can actually use the coax itself to uh, support all the antenna so we don't need a tripod so I'm now cutting the uh, length of tubing for the ballon for this now the ballon wants to be 13.5 millimeters long so what I've done here I've measured it off at 15 millimeters I'm going to use the Dremel to actually cut that off at 15 millimeters and then I'm going to use the flat part of this cutting wheel to actually grind it down to get it as close as I can to 13.5 millimeters so I think that's pretty damn close so I'm happy with that so uh, let's move on to the uh, semi-rigid coax and I'll show you what you need to prepare that next so next then I've got my uh, semi-rigid coax here it's about 120 millimeters long and I've uh, exposed some of the inner core here so I've cut away the outer braid and I've exposed about eight millimeters of the inner core so next what I'm going to do is use my uh, Dremel tool with the cutting wheel to cut a small trench in the side here so I can solder a uh, short length of this copper wire on the side and that way I've got two connection points to actually solder my elements onto. Now this copper wire is uh, 0.8 millimeters in diameter so it's quite thin and I'm also going to be using this copper wire to actually make the elements as well. So I've pre-tinned around this uh, little trench if you like around the uh, coax outer braid here I've also pre-tinned the uh, copper wire that I'm going to actually solder in place so what I'm going to do now is start soldering it all together so I've got a small piece of solder on the end of my iron and I'm going to solder this side first just enough to get that solder flowing and hold it in place and now what I can do is solder the other side and this time I can actually flow a bit of solder in as well So to finish this off what I've done I've used the Dremel tool to ground away any excess solder there and round it back off again and uh, I've gone in there with a small file just to uh, clean it right up just so it actually fits down the uh, ballon tube itself and I've also cut away a small lip of the outer braid there just to expose a uh, about a millimeter of that dielectric just to uh, add a little bit of insulation there when I bend the uh, signal wire back into an L shape so I can solder the uh, element on. 
Now, because I've used semi-rigid coax in this build, I'm going to have to use some heat shrink tubing to uh, insulate the uh, coax itself in order that it doesn't come in contact with the ballon. I just want it to actually come in contact at the uh, bottom here. I'm going to solder tack it on, but I don't want it to come into contact with, say, the top or the middle of the ballon. So I'm going to put some heat shrink tubing in between the uh, coax and the ballon itself and then push the ballon up and then just solder tack the ballon onto the coax here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm using the ballon so I can actually measure. I want it to actually uh, come and line up with that uh, dielectric that I uh, exposed here. So it's about a millimeter from the top of the coax and those two elements here. I'm going to put a little mark here and that's where I'm going to uh, actually attach the uh, heat shrink tube into so then I know that uh, all this part of the ballon here is not coming in contact with the uh, coax just the base here where I'm going to solder it onto so I've got my little mark there where I'm going to put my heat shrink tube in up to and I've also cut that to the correct length and just to make sure that that heat shrink tube in doesn't move once I've shrunk it in place I'm just going to put a little spot of super glue on here as well just to make double sure that uh, it doesn't actually move and start shorting the antenna out so here's the ballon in place, it's a really snug fit, I haven't soldered it on at the uh, base of the ballon yet but uh, I've left a little bit of heat shrink tube in at the top here and cut away any excess and what I'm going to do now, I've got a smaller piece of heat shrink tube in and I'm going to put that in place and shrink that around the top just to add another layer of insulation just so there's no danger of shorting out to the top of that ballon when I actually solder the two elements in place. So I've gone ahead and soldered the uh, ballon onto the uh, copper reflector, the PCB here, and the coax as well. And uh, just like the uh, 2.4 gigahertz version of this, I've put the reflector the opposite way around on the back because uh, I don't want the uh, actual waveguide of this attached directly to the uh, back reflector because it does mess around with the uh, VSWR of this antenna slightly. So what that actually means then to the measurements, because we've flipped the uh, reflector the opposite way around instead of having the copper side on this side here, we have to just take into consideration the one millimeter thickness of this PCB. So we have to take that away from any measurement that we make on this side, butting up to uh, the back of the uh, PCB itself. Now, the uh, elements want to be 10 0.4 millimeters away from the reflector so I've actually uh, measured in so this ballon actually comes up at 9.4 millimeters to take into consideration the one millimeter thickness of the PCB itself so next we're going to make the uh, elements for this antenna now the measurements are extremely small the uh, long leg wants to be 13.11 millimeters long and the short leg wants to be 11.8 millimeters long now Normally with an antenna like this, I would say the only way to get it spot on is to actually uh, etch it on a PCB. But uh, we're going to use the same method as I used in the 2.4 GHz version of this. I'm going to use two plastic tubes to help us get that measurement on those legs spot on. Now because the measurements are so small, we have to also take into account the thickness of the uh, copper wire that we're using to construct them. And this copper wire is 0.8 millimeters thick now what that means is because i'm going to use these little plastic tubes to actually uh, measure and cut the length of my uh, elements i also have to reduce the uh, actual length of the uh, tubes by 0.8 millimeters to take into consideration the thickness of the uh, copper wire because i want the outside length of these uh, elements to actually measure spot on at 13.11 uh, millimeters and 11.8 millimeters. If I didn't reduce the tubes by 0.8 millimeters to take into account the thickness of the copper wire, then these two elements would be 0.8 millimeters too long. So uh, that's one of the things you have to take into consideration with such a small wavelength. You also have to take into consideration the thickness of the wire as well. So I've got my two elements here ready to be soldered in place. I've already pre-tinned the elements where I'm going to be soldering them to. And uh, I've also cut back the uh, two um, lengths of coax here, the uh, inner core of the coax and this uh, connection here that connects to the 
outer braid the ground plane of the coax cut them back quite short as you can see here and I've pre-tinned those as well the reason why I want them to be quite short is because this antenna is so small I don't want say uh, an extra little bit sticking out of the uh, edge of this element and actually uh, adding to the antenna itself you've got to be really careful with that when you're using such small frequencies so I've pre-tinned these two areas so hopefully they'll solder in place no problem at all now this is the uh, center connection of the coax and this is really important because this is going to be your leading edge uh, element so whatever you do from this element onwards will dictate whether this is a uh, left hand circular polarized antenna or a right hand circular polarized antenna so to make a left hand circular polarized antenna if you have your first element here and uh, the first element is a long leg here then it's going to be left hand if I wanted a right hand circular polarized antenna then I would have to flip that round and my first element would be the uh, short leg so I'm going to make this a uh, left hand circular polarized antenna but it's really important this is the uh, leading edge of the antenna so if you actually take a look at the 2.4 gigahertz one that I did I actually went into a bit more detail on uh, why this is important but if you want a left hand one if you start off with the longer leg here first then the short leg and then on this side you have the long leg and then the short leg then you will have a uh, left hand circular polarized antenna now because with this antenna the elements are so small I don't need any kind of uh, support for the elements like the 2.4 GHz version of this I used a uh, round piece of tubing at the correct height for the elements to sit on and uh, that actually helped me also solder them in place it helped support the elements themselves but because this is so small I don't actually need any kind of support so what I've got here to uh, help me solder it in the correct position I've got this uh, modeling clay putty it's actually a clay but it doesn't set hard you can use it over and over again and it's perfect for holding the uh, elements in the position where I want them to actually solder them in place and I can just remove this so both the elements are soldered in place now so what I'm going to do is uh, give them a final look straighten them out if they're, they're not quite lined up and then I'm going to put a little bit of epoxy putty in between there just to add a little bit of strength to them so next I'm going to fit the uh, waveguide to this antenna then so what I've got here is a can it's uh, 54 millimeters in diameter and uh, I'm going to cut it down so it's uh, 25 millimeters long and I think 25 millimeters is probably the uh, best length for this antenna it's kind of in the middle makes it into a decent waveguide so it's got long range but still you know doesn't make the uh, beam width too narrow so it's still not as wide as uh, this is as is but uh, it's still wide enough where you don't have to keep it actually spot on the uh, quadcopter or whatever you are trying to uh, get the uh, video signal from so it's a nice uh, middle ground 25 millimeters and 25 millimeters just happens to be the uh, width of this uh, masking tape so I don't have to go uh, messing around measuring the uh, can itself to actually cut round it I can just wrap this masking tape around here and then I can cut along the masking tape so I've cut the waveguide down to size and I've just tidied it up with some uh, emery paper just uh, getting rid of any uh, sharp edges I've also cleaned up the inside as well so uh, what I'm going to do now is epoxy it in place just straight onto the back of the PCB here and then when the epoxy is dry I'm going to put some uh, paint on this and then put an SMA connector on the end so here is the uh, finished antenna now it's been painted then and uh, you can also round off these corners on the uh, reflector as well like I have on this one and the semi-rigid coax does uh, a really good job of actually supporting this antenna and uh, it's not that heavy at all it is actually quite light so if you do actually attempt to uh, build one of these crosshair antennas with the actual waveguide as well either for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz or the 5.8 gigahertz then please uh, drop a comment below and let us know if you uh, saw a uh, difference there with the uh, range i've uh, recently watched a video on uh, a normal crosshair antenna uh, comparing it to a helical antenna and the guy on there was saying that it uh, you know the helical outperformed the uh, crosshair antenna but uh, to be perfectly honest with you the video that i watched he was 
going on out to something like uh, 10 kilometers 12 kilometers it was quite a distance but uh, he said it uh, slightly underperformed next to a helical now uh, there is actually a way of adding more elements to this antenna this antenna in the uh, ham radio uh, community is actually called something a little bit different and uh, they do have one for the uh, lower frequencies anyway that has uh, a stacked element arrangement so what i'll do i'll have a look at that antenna see if i can bring the uh, measurements down and uh, i'll try it on the uh, 2.4 gigahertz first and see how well it actually performs with the extra elements on the network analyzer and if i do see a uh, increase of say 3 db i'll probably do a video in the future showing how you can actually add a second set of elements to the crosshair to hopefully get a little bit more performance out of it so it's up there at least with a uh, say a six turn helical antenna so i hope you have a go at building one of these and if you do feedback on the uh, comments below and let us know how well it performed and as i said at the beginning of the video you don't have to uh, use uh, the waveguide on uh, this particular build you can take the methods and just make a uh, normal crosshair antenna and just replace the waveguide with some kind of plastic tubing to protect the elements themselves and also make the reflector slightly bigger as well so as i say hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you did please give it a uh, thumbs up and uh, any questions drop them below and uh, i have to say a big thank you to frank for providing the uh, measurements for this particular antenna so i didn't have to do too much research on uh, how to build one of these and uh, hopefully you have a go at making one of these and hopefully you'll join me on the next one